If anything doesn't always be the coolant, we set this again and again and again. We get the coordinated to make sure that it leads to a cool condition. Let me give you just a little bit of an example, okay? So this is actually off the fire grounds. This is Prince William or George? I always get them confused. George, Prince George. George, if you want to, you want to tell a story? No, go ahead. All right, because I'm going to make up some parts of it because I wasn't there. But, uh, no, basically, here's what happened. They get on the scene, they got a couch fire right inside the door. There's only that thing. They got a little couch on fire right inside the door. Kind of an unusual house. Right? It's like sliding glass doors on the front. It's got a covered porch on the front of the house. But they get on the scene. That's your couch fire, right? Yeah. So if you get on the scene, and then they, got, they don't have water just yet, but they got reports people are usually home this time of day. Not known trap documents, but people are usually home this time of day. We're going to go in, we're going to do a quick primary search by these guys big water. Can you see that little bit of hose sticking up there? They dropped, what, 100 feet of hose, somewhere about in that portico? You can imagine how that worked out, right? <laughs> Not so good. So what happens, they go in the door, they put the door open behind us, what happens to the fire? It gets bigger. At some point, either the glass fails or somebody takes the additional glass and hands to the fire. Now, can you imagine being the guy standing outside? Now, I got two of my brothers inside doing search. I see this fire going and developing. What was I taught? Ventilate to get the heat out. I'm standing right in front of this big piece of glass. I would ventilate and let the heat out. He didn't let the heat out, he triggered a flash hole. These two guys came out of this building on fire. They got out because when they said, oh shit, they started to run. They ran right out the door. They didn't trip, they didn't stumble on anything. They got lucky. And they came out on fire. They had to pick up the burn through a hose line and, like a garden hose, put these guys out. I don't prevent this from happening. Let me raise the stakes a little bit. It's not, I think somebody's home. It's dad's on the front lawn, all snotted up, going like this. There's two, my two kids are inside. They're in the back bedroom. You go. Okay, you think you better, bro. That's what you put your hand in here and said you were going to do. So, how do you prevent this from happening? Okay. One, you close the door behind you. Two, yeah, two, so, you know what, you could roll on, with all the shit we're wearing, you could roll on that couch and put out the list of that fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's a couch fire, right? I mean, really, that's what we started with. Look at this. This is two minutes from an incipient couch fire to total flash over the entire structure. We're not making this shit up. This isn't in somebody's laboratory. This is somebody's fire line. Close the door. Get a little water in the fire. How much? Now, you and I are going to search this out. How big is it? Six, eight hundred square feet, maybe a thousand? Do we have to stay in touch with one another as we search? It's just you and me. Okay, what I mean is we have to be attached to the head. No, as long as I know where you're at and I know where, where you're at, right? So can I stay at the couch with my hand can or my silver bullet? And you go, I already got one. You don't have any. You go get the kid, right? You can be a hero. I put some water on the fire. He goes and makes his primary search. If I start to lose it, what do I say? Get out, I'm losing it, right? We can stay in communication, we gave it a good college try, but we're not just waiting for shit to hit. Control the door, early water, deny it air, get it some water, some water on the fire while we're denying the air. None of this happens, we get the kids, everything is good. You were an aggressive interior firefighter. You were an intelligent firefighter. You understood what makes fires grow and develop, and you took constructive steps to prevent that from happening. As a consequence, you were able to go on and interview those kids. Right? It doesn't matter how great you are or how tough you are, this ain't working, is it? The fire just kicked your ass. Right? Too much air, not enough water. We can do something about this. We can stay inside, we can do what it is we said we were going to do, we can do it effectively, we can do it efficiently. And there's no reason that we have to survive these kind of incidents. Really, really simple, right? What else can we do? We talked about two, two parts of the triangle. Take the air away, and make some air, and get some water on it. What's the third piece? Take the fuel away. If I grab that couch and heat it out that window, what do I got? I got a rubbish fire now. I don't have a structure anymore. A rubbish fire. I do a lot of firefighting in walk-ups, five, six, seven-story walk-ups. There's a lot of buildings in uptown and lake in the city of Chicago that we joke that are, you know, the high-rise code kicks in at 80 feet. So we joke that these buildings are 79 feet, 11 and three-quarter inches tall. <laughs> and they're, it's pretty close to that. Right? So a lot of walk-ups with long hallways, and we did a lot of throwing mattresses and couches and stuff out of windows. Right? Because by the time you got up there, you get up and make your process. All you had was a mantis fire, some little thing. That's a long lead out. It's a lot of, hey, get the fuel out of the building. Now, don't make it a light shift. Make sure it's a window. Because <laughs> the 
first time I witnessed this, I went into a light shaft and two alarms later, it was like, <laughs> 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 not making that one up, it was, you know, but so we, we threw a lot of furniture out of windows, get the fuel out of the building, okay? I'm saying, I'm conserving value. Okay. So, in matters, right? If FDNY can get that battle ship to change course a little bit, so can the rest of us. This is the OV. You know what the OV is? Outside vent van? Okay. Historically, during the latter history, the OV had about almost more authority than the incident command. Because why? Because he's on the back side of a building where he's pretty much an independent operator. Back in the day before they had candy puff, right? And so that guy had to make a decision. If he thought the window needed vented, he vented the window. It was a practical necessity. <laughs> now that you've got radios and you can communicate with that engine company, what this guy is doing, what you're watching him do, is he's talking to the engine company. He sees fire behind that window, but he's not taking that glass until that engine officer says, yeah, we're on top of this, we're going to get water. And actually, he's delayed a little longer than he should because he wanted the first transmission wasn't clear. He's like, ah, uh, wait a minute, what do you say? Right? He's just getting verification, the guy gives him verification and he takes the glass. Okay? Really simple change, right? Not a big deal, kind of in the top. Don't add ventilation until you're in a position to suppress. And that's what they're trying to get their guys to understand. Yeah, do we need ventilation? Yeah, is that, you see the black shit coming out of there? That fire hasn't been put out yet, but he knows those guys are in a position to do something. 